welcome to my music room. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to look at xylophones. These are members of the percussion family. Xylophones are played with mallets and when we play that with the mallets we want to make sure that we don't grab them by the head. That's that little gray ball there on the end and on this one yeah I'm going to have to slightly touch it because I got to get it out of the holder and the yellow head right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of far away. So we're going to look at what makes the xylophone work. Why is it called a xylophone? Because the word xylo comes from the Greek word that means wood. Xylo, Greek, is wood. So there you, there's your Greek lesson for the day. So if I play this one that's a little smaller, this is the soprano xylophone, um, I get sounds from this, my lowest end, to my highest note. And there's the soprano xylophone. Now you'll notice that this one is bigger. The alto xylophone is quite a bit bigger. So do you think that would be a lower sound or a higher sound? Think about that for a minute. This is the alto xylophone. This is the soprano xylophone. So altos are a vocal part that sings a little bit lower than sopranos. This instrument's bigger. Bigger typically means lower. Longer means lower. So this is gonna make a lower sound. So it's gonna be lower. My lowest note here, quite a bit lower than my lowest note here. My highest note here those are the same notes. I'm on the lower end of this xylophone and I'm at the very top end of the alto xylophone. So size makes a difference when we're talking about uh, how high or how low an instrument is. I'm going to move the camera here and let you see the xylophone up close and personal and we're going to look at some of the bars on the instrument. So let's look at our two xylophones. We have the alto xylophone right here and the soprano xylophone right here. So do you notice just by looking at the two together there's a big size difference. Let's look just at the soprano xylophone. We have long bars and they get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until we get all the way up here to our very shortest bar. The xylophone is also laid out just like a piano. So if you can play the piano, you're probably gonna pick up the xylophone pretty quickly. So we have C, D, E, F, G, and in music, remember when we get to G, we start back over with A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we start over again, A. And just as with our soprano xylophone, the alto xylophone is laid out exactly the same only everything's an octave lower. We have C. We can barely hear that, can't you? Let me hit it harder. C, D, E, F, G, A, E, C, D, E, F, G, A. Just like on the piano, the only thing that's missing is a row of black notes that would be up here. And in the video that I have linked uh, to my classroom, you're gonna see someone playing the Flight of the Bumblebee. And you will notice he has a second layer of bars up here and they are in a two, three, two, three pattern. Now, what would happen if I played more than one bar at a time? What if I played C and E together? I played 
Uh, let's see, what if I play G and B together? One, two, three. So these are thirds. And our ear likes to hear that. What if I play a fourth? Our ear likes to hear that too. And what if I really stretch out my fingers? Let's see if Miss Pattison can do this. What if I played a fifth in one hand? Let's see if I can do it. You ready? So I can play more than one note just using one hand, just by putting the, the mallets in my hand like this and adjusting the distance. I can play more than one note if I wanted to. I can just put one mallet down and play you a song if I wanted to. I hope you recognize that. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, or the ABC song. So, based on what we've learned so far about the xylophone, what family do you think the xylophone would be in? We have four choices. Here's my board. You may choose strings, which means it has strings. Does the xylophone have strings? Is it a woodwind instrument? Do we blow in it using a reed? Is it a brass instrument? Does it have a cup-shaped mouthpiece that we blow into? Nope. Is it percussion? Is it like a drum? Do we hit it, shake it, kick it, scrape it? I think we have a winner. So the xylophone is a member of the percussion family because we hit it with mallets. We don't hit it with just random sticks. We don't hit it with even our hands. We always use the appropriate mallet and we take care of our instruments. Now, some of you may have some other types of xylophones. Maybe you have a glockenspiel at your house or a metallophone. And that would be basically a xylophone, except instead of having wooden bars on it, it's gonna have metal bars. It's gonna sound a little tinklier, a little brighter, more like bells, more metallic sounding, as opposed to what we have here that sounds like wood because it's made of wood. So it has a much softer, gentler sound. So I hope you have enjoyed learning just a little bit about the xylophone today. Join me next week and we'll have something all new. Bye, love you guys.